Next, forces and motion. And first, speed. In physics, it's important to be able to describe and measure things accurately. One way to describe the motion of an object is by measuring its speed. And to work out the speed of anything, we need to know two facts. If I push this car along the studio floor, to work out its speed, we need to know the distance it has travelled and the time it has taken. And the best way of remembering this is by using a formula triangle. The equation is speed equals distance divided by time, and we can remember this because we can say speed is so many kilometres per hour. You can also remember the phrase SIDOT, which is speed is distance over time. Now, if we turn the speed equals distance over time equation into a triangle, it looks like this. If we know any two components in this triangle, we can work out the third, like this. Speed equals distance divided by time. We know that one. Distance equals speed multiplied by time. Time equals distance divided by speed. So if a test question asks you to find out the distance an object travels, you will be given the speed and the time, which you can then multiply together to find out the distance. The other important thing to remember when working out calculations in physics is to use the correct units. For example, there are three common units for speed which you should know about. First, meters per second, written m slash s. Secondly, miles per hour, written mph or miles slash h. And the third one is kilometers per hour, km slash h. For the speed distance time formula, I remembered it from a rap that we did. Here's part of the rap. I am distance and I do dangle at the top of this triangle. Although they think it is a crime, they hold me up. Yo, speed and time. I remember the equation for speed by remembering the speed distance time triangle. And the triangle always starts with D, then S, and then T, which is in alphabetical order. Examiners expect you to be very accurate with your units, particularly in physics questions. For example, when you're doing speed calculations, they'll expect you to give the units as meters per second. When you're doing pressure calculations, they'll expect you to give the units in newtons per meter squared. Be careful. Don't leave out the units. You'll lose marks if you do. Here's a question about speed from a past test paper, which uses the two-second rule for car drivers from the highway code. In the highway code, it says, leave enough space between you and the vehicle in front so that you can pull up safely if it suddenly slows down. A two-second time gap may be sufficient. Use stationary objects like lampposts to help you keep a two-second gap. So the question is, if the traffic is moving at 20 metres per second and a driver is keeping to the two-second rule, what is the distance between the driver and the car in front? I think our formula triangle will be useful here. The answer is 40 metres. Let's see how we work it out. We have our formula triangle, distance, speed, time. Here we know the speed is 20 metres per second and the time is 2 seconds and we want to know the distance. From the triangle, distance equals the speed multiplied by the time. That's 20 times 2, 40. But remember, the unit for distance in this case is metres, so the answer is 40 metres. In part B of the same question, it says that the traffic increases its speed to 25 metres per second, but the driver stays the same distance from the car in front. She sees the car in front pass a lamppost. How long will it take her to reach the same lamppost? A tip here is to read the question carefully and find out what answer they're looking for, not what you think they're looking for. So, in this question, we're looking for how long the time taken. So, this time we know the speed and the distance travelled. 
We're told the speed has gone up to 25 meters per second, but the distance traveled, the distance between the cars has stayed the same. That's 40 meters. If we slot those into our formula triangle, we see that the time equals the distance divided by the speed, which is 40 divided by 25, which is 1.6. Don't forget the units, seconds. So first of all, let's just sort out what pressure is. By just standing here, I'm creating pressure. My feet are pushing down on an area of the studio floor. It's the same if I use my hand to lean on this column. So a force acting on a surface causes pressure. But if I change my trainers here for something more elegant, a stiletto heel, the pressure from this shoe on the studio floor will increase. Now, how can that be when my weight, the force I exert on the floor, stays the same? Let's take a closer look. If you stand on something squashy like sand, you can easily see the pressure caused by your weight acting over the area of the sole of your shoes. It's the pressure which produces footprints. I weigh the same. But my footprint is deeper wearing this than this. The pressure depends on the area of the sole of the shoe. So, as my weight stays the same, if I double the area of the sole of my shoes, I should half the pressure. As the area gets bigger, the pressure gets smaller. So, the footprints from my red shoes are deeper than the green ones. They're not really me, are they? So, pressure is dependent on the force that is pushing and the area over which it pushes. The relationship between all three, pressure, force and area, can be summarised using this formula. Pressure equals force divided by area. And we can turn this into another formula triangle, so that as with the speed triangle, if we know two of these components, we can work out the third. So pressure equals force divided by area. We know that. Force equals pressure times area and area equals force divided by pressure. And remember your units again. Force is measured in newtons, a capital N. Area is measured in meters squared, so pressure is measured in newtons per meter squared. Now, the amount of pressure exerted on a surface has some important practical applications. If you apply a force over a large surface area, it results in a small pressure which is why skis or snowshoes spread your weight over the surface of the snow. And if you apply the same force over a small surface area, it results in a big pressure, like the point of a drawing pin. So you need to know that pressure is how much force is exerted on a certain area. Pressure equals force divided by area. And you can use the formula triangle to help complete any calculations involving pressure.